What is going on everyone? Shake and Bake 2355 here. Welcome to a new series on the channel, more of like a mini series, uh, but a new series nonetheless. Uh, what I'm, and it's a different series than anything I'm used to, uh, that, or that you're used to here on the channel. I've never done it, but uh, anything like this before, so we're going to see how this goes. I hope it's, uh, hope you guys enjoy it as much as I think when you're going to. Basically what this is, as you know from the title, is we're rebuilding the 3 and 13 New York Giants. Um, unlike my other series on the channel, uh, the franchise modes, I'm not going to play any games in this one. It's really just kind of sim everything and do the offseason drafts and signings. and uh, We'll go over all the games and stuff, look at the box scores, see how we do, uh, how our players are doing. But as far as playing the games, probably not going to play any as I do want to get through this rather quickly. And I think we'll probably go until I win a Super Bowl with this team. And maybe do the year after trying to defend the title. But uh, either way though, I think it's going to be fun. Smash that like button if you guys are as ready and excited for this as I am. Let's get into it. Uh, so like I said, we're going to pick the New York Giants. Now they have some pretty good pieces, but if you look at their overalls, they're pretty bad. Uh, and I'm actually going to cut down the roster quite a bit here. Uh, we're going to keep the same owner, Steve Tisch. Um, one player we signed we did want to do is Wes and Richburg. 27 years old, quick development, 80 overall at center. Uh, his blocking skills could use a little help, but his impact block is, is really good. So we did resign him, and then the other guy we resigned was Devon Kennard. Uh, left outside linebacker, probably going to start for us. We'll see. I uh, might want to address that in the draft. But looking at the roster now, after, like I said, I pretty much cut everyone that wasn't young or good or basically if I couldn't get out of your contract like Eli for example 12.4 million dollar penalty so he's still on the roster but Davis Webb I'm not sure who's going to start might even try to get one uh, quarterback in free agency or the draft but those are the two quarterbacks on roster to start the franchise as Eli is 37 years old so hopefully we can get out his contract soon Paul Perkins and Willie Goldman Jr. are the running backs left on roster at this time. Not sure who's going to start yet. Um, I said Willie, it's Wayne. We have no fullback. Receivers, we have four on roster. But Beckham Jr., Shepard, Roger Lewis, and Dwayne Harris. And then Evan Ingram at tight end. I like him. Rhett Ellison, probably play more fullback for us. Eric Flowers, left tackle. Couldn't, Didn't really like uh, the... His contract, so we didn't get rid of him. Like I said, Wes and Richburg, we just re-signed. And Brett Jones is still on roster to back us up there. John Jerry is the only right guard on roster. Probably look to upgrade as soon as we can with him. And then we have no right tackles on the roster, so we're going to have to address that right away. JPP, uh, we actually put him on the trade block, and we are going to actually trade him before the season. I'll get more into that here in a bit. But Aquara is on the roster as well. Like I said, I added him to the trade block there. And we do actually end up trading him. More on that later. Olivier Vernon couldn't get out of that contract. So he's still on the roster. Uh, he's actually still pretty good though. So don't mind having him. Damon Harrison Sr. and Dalvin Tomlinson. Two pretty good DTs. And we re-signed Dev uh, Devon Kennard. As you saw earlier in the video. And then BJ Goodson and Ray Ray Armstrong. I mean, they're there for bodies, pretty much. I don't think either of them will be starting at middle linebacker for us. And we have no role on the roster right now. Janoris Jenkins, uh, DRC, and Eli Apple are the three corners on the roster. Definitely going to try to address that a little bit in free agency in the draft. Uh, safety, definitely. Darren Thompson. And then Landon Collins is a beast. So, And then I cut our kicker and punter because they were terrible. And uh, there was no penalty to, to get rid of him, so I did. But like I said, we got the second overall pick. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, we'll be picking second. So on to the offseason stage one, uh, signing free agents. Just kind of going to base off, well, I'll show you who's all available. It's actually a pretty good uh, class for the first offseason. Usually the first offseason of Madden games are terrible in terms of talent, but this is actually pretty good. I mean, I've seen better, but still pretty good. Uh, definitely for the first season. 
Uh, the way I'm going to show you this is just kind of like show you who we offered first and then as I advance the week we'll show you who we signed. So we did offer a contract to BJ Finney to play left guard. A three year, three turn, uh, $13.1 million deal. And then right guard Jock Klein, we also ex uh, extended an offer to three years, $13.4 million. Um, and it's basically, I'm pretty sure, you know, right guard, we didn't really have anyone on, I think there was one person on roster, but he isn't very good. And then right tackle, we had no one on roster, so Cameron Fleming, 25 years old, 77 overall, I think he'll get better. And then uh, right outside linebacker, we have no one on roster at this time. So we extended a two-year uh, $5.4 million deal with Justin March Lillard to be our uh, outside linebacker. The middle linebacker, we had two pretty bad guys on the team. So Todd Davis, 26 years old. I like his tackling and pursuit, play recognition, block shedding, all that's really good. Speed could be a little better, but... You know, four-year, $12 deal, uh, million dollar deal is not bad. And then we also want a Corey Mill, uh, Moores, 25 years old. We needed to upgrade at safety. So we offered him a three-year deal. And then cornerback Mike Hilton. I get this guy in all my franchises I do. Well, at least I try to anyway. Because he's 24 years old and he's, like, really good. Uh, and then we extended offer to Harrison Butker and Jordan Berry. And then we're actually looking at receiver here, and I'm debating between Landry and Meredith. Landry is clearly the better option, so we actually did extend him an offer. Um, try to reunite him and OBJ, the two LSU receivers. Imagine they were once on a college team together. That's crazy. But we did give him an offer, but as you can see, we were very low on the totem pole there, sixth place. Only three points out, but that was kind of the difference maker. So we do go back in and offer him more money. Not a whole lot because we don't have much cap room at this point. But we do offer him a deal for your $38.7 mil, which does put us on top. So hopefully we can get him. Looking at the who we got, though, we got Mike Hilton, but Landry rejected us. So we got a good cornerback coming to the Giants. Like I said, Landry rejected us. I'm not sure where he went. We got the punter, Jordan Berry. We got the right outside linebacker. Who maybe we can might still try to upgrade that in the draft though. Uh, we got the kicker we wanted. We got the right tackle that we wanted. I think he's going to do pretty good for us. Uh, B.J. Finney accepted, and then Corey Miller rejected us, which kind of sucks because he's a good young player. I would love to have had him on the team. But we did get Todd Davis, so I'm happy about that. And then uh, Josh Klein rejected us, so we're still looking for that right guard. And then we hired a trainer as well. Tried to fire Ben McAdoo, and it wouldn't let me, so I'll have to wait till next year. But he is definitely going to be gone, probably. Unless we turn things around, of course. So, um, back to that right guard, we did uh, offer a low ball offer to Joe Berger. Or Berger, I'm not sure how you say that. I think it's Berger. And uh, he did accept the offer, so we do got him for one year to play right guard. Um, and then, like I said, we did end up trading Jason Pierre-Paul. Uh, and here's that deal. Uh, there was no like offer that blew me away. Like Obviously, I didn't think we'd get a first-round pick. But I figured we'd get at least pull like, a second next year. But the best offer we got, as you see, I looked through them. I think there's only like three or four. I don't know what the Bucks are spoken. Like, why? I don't need Chris Conti. No. Uh, but yeah, there's like five offers. So we ended up going with the Patriots. We get a third round this year and a seventh round next year. Which, I think we get a pretty good pick with their third round. Or, yeah, I think we do take someone with their third round in this draft. But So we do get rid of Jason Pierre-Paul. So that's another need now left end, but... Here's our signings, Todd Davis, Joe Berger, Mike Hilton, Harrison Butker, Cameron Fleming, Jordan Berry, B.J. Finney, and Justin March Lillard. So no uh, high-profile guys, but uh, definitely people that are going to help our team, I think, uh, immediately have you know pretty good immediate impact on the squad. 
So let's go to the draft now. The Browns are on the clock, and there we wanted a quarterback with the first with our first pick, and there was a guy. I think it was Cameron Wrights is his name, and the damn Browns took him. That's who I wanted. Didn't get him. So then I'm scrambling. I don't know who I want. I thought about trading down, but there wasn't really anything worth trading down. So I ended up settling on middle linebacker Rashad Phillips. I thought he was um, the best player available. I mean, look at his combine. I like his hit power tackle pursuit. Um, and he, I think he is a pretty good player. Um, and yeah, yeah, so we did take him 7-8 overall normal development. They said it reached. But looking at those numbers, though, the tackling, the pursuit, uh, he's got to get his uh, play recognition up a little bit. But hit powers up, block shading's pretty decent. I think that's a pretty good pick. I think he's more of a late first rounder, but uh, it, it was a very, very big need. I know we signed uh, Todd Davis, but we're just going to move one of them, either Davis or Phillips, to the outside. So they'll both be starting, so he'll get to play. Um, on to the second round. Uh, there was one more quarterback I wanted, Zach Veldman, and he was actually available. He was supposed to go in the late first. Obviously, I'm picking second in the second round, so it wasn't exactly... Uh, he didn't exactly fall too far, uh, but I did like his numbers, and so we went ahead and drafted him. 77 overall, quick development. Um, throw powers up there already. Short accuracy, medium accuracy. I think it's a pretty good pick. He's definitely going to compete. For the starting job with Eli Manning and Davis Webb. I mean, might even give, you know, we'll see how he does in preseason. But he's a likely candidate to start day one for us in 2018. So now on to the third round. This is not the pick we got from the Patriots. This is our actual third round pick. And we're looking at running back because I'm not too keen on Paul Perkins and Gallman. I think they're decent, but I don't know if they're the future. At that position for us, so we went ahead and took speedback Virgil Hatchet out of UCLA, and uh, he's got pretty pretty fast, uh, 96 speed. He's 76 overall, but he does have slow development, so I was kind of mad about that. But um, I, you know, I think he can compete for the starting job right away as well. Um, we have a good young backfield. I'm not sure if any of those guys are the future, but you know. So here's the Patriots pick. There was no one I wanted at the end of the third round, so I went ahead and traded it away to the uh, San Francisco. So essentially, we got ended up getting a uh, third next year and a seventh this year. So essentially, it turns into a third and two sevens for JPP. And then the start of the fourth round, which was only a couple picks later, so there still wasn't anyone on roster I want or on the draft board that I really wanted at that stage. So we went ahead and traded that one away to Cleveland for a third next year and a seventh next year. And then on to the fifth round. Again, there was no one really there. I didn't want to reach and take someone that was going to be a bust or anything. So we traded to Dallas for a third round next year. And then on to the sixth round. Went ahead and took uh, running back Desi Ward, power back. So we had the speed back, the two one cuts. So we can't get a power back. Uh, 67 overall, but I mean that trucking's up to 85, 88 stiff arm. Carrying's pretty good. Ball carrier vision for a rookie is decent. And then we had two seventh rounds. This is our seventh round. We ended up trading that to Washington for a fourth next year. I don't like getting a bunch of picks off the computers like this, but at the same time I didn't want to take any bust players, so I just traded away a lot of picks. And then the pick I think we got from the Patriots, we ended up taking. Uh, and trading to a fourth next year for Atlanta. So we only took four players in this draft, but I like all four players. Uh, Rashad Phillips, I think he's going to be really good for us. Zach Feldman, potential. He could potentially be the quarterback of the future for us. Our franchise guy, the next Eli. Hopefully a little better than Eli. Uh, and then Virgil Hatchet, I thought was a very good pick in the third round. And you know, pretty cheap for the quarterback there, too. Three three mil, six total, at, um, you know, once you put his bonus in. And then Desi Ward, I thought, was, you know, for a sixth-round pick, that's a pretty good pick. I think 67 overall, yeah, but he's a big power back. He can even move in the fullback if we need to, I think. He's big enough. 
So, yeah, I definitely liked the draft. I thought we did a very good job, and we got some picks for next year. Hopefully a better draft class. And then the one high-profile um, free agent we signed in the preseason was Danny Amendola. We needed to fill one more role here in the receiving core. Otherwise, we pretty much drafted a bunch of undrafted rookies. You'll see them here on the roster as we're looking at the roster. Um, I don't have, at this point, I hadn't did the depth chart yet, so I don't know who's starting. I will let you know at the start of next episode. I'll show you the depth chart for week one of the Radio Clear season and let you know who's starting and whatnot. But, yeah, this is just going over the roster in the background here while I wrap things up. But like I said, you know, I don't know how long this series is going to go. Um, I don't want it, I don't intend for it to be like 50,000 episodes. But I definitely want to try to rebuild these guys from the ground up, win a Super Bowl for the city of New York in that tough market that we're in here in New York. Curtis Frazier is an undrafted rookie that we signed. Uh, I think he's going to start week one for us. Uh, back to what I was saying, though. I'm um, not sure how long this is going to go. I definitely want to try to win a Super Bowl and then maybe try to defend that title, see if we can go back-to-back. -back. Just a, a fun little miniseries for the channel to do um, on days when I don't feel like doing the Jaguar franchise. I don't know. I just don't want to do the same series every single day because I don't want to get tired out on it. I don't want you guys to get burnt out on it. So I figured we switch it up, and I think this is a fun thing, it's something I've never done on the channel. Um, and I'm excited. If you guys are excited, please leave a like down below. Be sure to subscribe for more Giants Rebuild, as well as the other series on the channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time, peace.